Hi, everyone. My name is Martin. I'm leading the developer relations team here at Ava Labs. And today, I want to talk about ACP 77 and what this network upgrades means for the Avalanche network. All right, so let's look at how Avalanche scales today. We have a validator set, and all of these validators are validating the primary network. So to further scale horizontally, now a subset of validators can decide to validate an additional blockchain, and we call that a subnet. And we can keep doing that and keep doing that. And if you think of a blockchain like a highway with a limited throughput, it's like building multiple highways in parallel and reaching a massive combined throughput. So let's look at ACP 77. ACP 77 proposes, while keeping the same scaling approach, to not use subsets of validators, but distinct validator sets. And today, we want to talk about what this means and why we're motivated to do this. Um, and the first one and most important uh, topic here is e the economic barrier. So let's look at staking requirements. Um, the primary network has a staking requirement of 2,000 AVEX. And now these three subnets here have each their own staking requirements. So subnet A, for example, has a staking requirement of 100 A token. That means for a validator to, stay, uh, to become a subnet A validator, they need to stake that amount. So for the primary network validators, that means that they only have to stake uh, the 2,000 AVEX. They're only validating the primary network. But a uh, subnet validator uh, of the uh, subnet A will have to fulfill the primary network staking requirement as well as the subnet A staking requirement. And this may be quite a huge economic barrier because AVAX, if we assume a price of $20, that is 40,000 US dollars worth of AVAX for a single validator to being able to validate the subnet A. So, the question is now, how can we lower that economic barrier? In the post-ACP70 world with L1s, the staking requirements stay there exactly the same. However, if a validator wants to validate an L1, they will only have to fulfill their staking requirement. And this is massively lowering the economic barrier to launch subnets, uh, to launch L1s, especially with large validator sets. And But also, let's look at the running costs. Right, to run a subnet. So here we can see that the primary network requires a lot of hardware and uh, computational resources. And therefore, um, we have to spend quite a uh, big part of our costs. And most of the subnets we see today uh, have a lower throughput than the, or no, lower utilization than the primary network. So the majority of the computational resources of a validator are required by the primary network. In the post-ACP70 world, the validators of L1s will only have to have the computational resources and the hardware of the require, uh, requirements of that L1. So especially layer ones with low throughput and high value transactions um, can probably reduce heavily the hardware requirements for the validators and therefore also the running costs. So let's look overall what that means. In general, the running costs are um, uh, reduced a lot, but also um, the 2000 AVEX staking requirement um, is removed for layer one validators. Um, and instead of that, we have a fee introduced, a monthly fee for this validator to be recorded on the P chain uh, for interoperability purposes. So instead of staking 2000 AVEX, uh, each validator will just uh, pay a fee between one and 10 AVEX, depending on the mat. Now let's look at fault isolation. So we can see here that this validator validates the primary network and the subnet. And this is great when there is no issue. But let's look at times when there is a lot of a demand for the primary network and there is heavy congestion on the primary network. This has an effect on the subnet. And let's look at the worst case when there is an issue on the primary network. You know, when uh, there is an issue there, it could definitely uh, have downstream effects on the uh, subnet because all of the validators of the subnet also have to validate the primary network. In the post ACB7 design, um, where the validator sets are distinct, congestions and fault on the primary network have no effect on the layer one. 
In the beginning, there will be some dependency on the P chain. Uh, however, our engineering team is working on reducing that long term. Now look, uh, let's look at compliance. So many institutions that want to adopt blockchain are struggling with exposure to public permissionless blockchains. The primary network is a public permissionless blockchain. So while the institution can choose to make the subnet a private proof of authority blockchain, um, there is only very limited ways to reduce their exposure to the public permissionless uh, C chain. So there is something, a workaround, we call it the primary network partial sync, but it's not a full solution. In the future, post ACP 77, since the uh, validator sets will be uh, completely separate, there is no more validation required of the public permissionless chains in the Avalanche ecosystem. Um, so while a layer one may choose also be pub to be public permissionless, it may also choose to be private uh, proof of authority and have no exposure to other public permissionless blockchains. Now let's look at valid a validator set management. And this is one of the bigger features of ACP 77 I'm very excited about. So to recap, the primary network consists of three chains, the C chain, the P chain, and the X chain. The C chain is our public smart contract chain, which is known by most users that are interacting with Avalanche. The P chain and the X chain are special chains. And the P chain specifically is there for recording all the validators of the Avalanche ecosystem, of the primary network, and of its subnets. So you can think of it as a registry of validators. You know, the node IDs, the public keys, and the stake weights are recorded on the P chain. And every validator knows every um, other validator in the Avalanche network and exactly how much their stake weight is on the other uh, subnets. This is a property we would love to keep because this is the base of our interoperability protocol that makes it so um, trustless and cheap uh, across Avalanche subnets. So currently, the way that validator sets are managed are with the capabilities of the P chain. So a validator fulfills some requirement, for example, being appointed to a proof of authority subnet or um, fulfilling some staking requirement. And then the P chain determines if that's valid and then informs the subnet about the new validator set and sets that validator set. However, um, there are some issues here, right? The P chain doesn't have smart contract capabilities like the C chain does. So it's very limited in what I can do to, do, to determine my validator set. Actually, I can only do proof of authority subnets or I can only do public permissionless subnets using something called elastic subnets, which is not used in production at all and not very practical. So this will be deprecated with this update. So now let's look at the post ACP 77 design. So we're really turning the P chain into this pure form of a registry that doesn't implement the logic on how the subnet validator set is um, uh, managed anymore, but only uh, really functions as a uh, registry. So from now on, a validator can fulfill the staking requirements uh, on a layer one. And then this layer one informs the P chain about the changes to the validator set. So if a layer one chooses to delegate their validator set management to, let's say, a smart contract on that layer one, they can easily do that. Another feature here is that we can also delegate the um, validator set management uh, of our layer one to a different layer one. So let's say the C chain. And this really opens up the design space, right? We can now arbitrarily determine our validator set we can implement proof of authority, ESC20 staking, native token staking, literally anything that can be expressed in a smart contract on any Avalanche network. So let's look at a concrete example. You know, let's look at this layer one that has a staking requirement of a token, uh, 100 A token. So let's say our L1A delegates the management of the validator set to a smart contract on the layer one B. Now the validator stakes 100 A token on that smart contract and the smart contract informs the P chain about that change. And now, you know, you can see already how we can basically implement anything uh, to uh, manage our validator set. So some common questions here, right? What about the security of the primary network? So currently, um, the graphs I showed you earlier weren't really accurate of the actual topology of the network. We have 1400 validators here. Right, 250 of them are subnet validators, and that is just the number. If you look at the stake weight, the share of the uh, subnet validators is actually pretty small. 
So let's say now all of these 250 validators would completely abandon the primary network. Well, that would mean the absolute number of validators would go down a little bit, but less than 20%. So that is not really critical to the security of the primary network. And if you also look at the stake weight these validators have, this is actually not critical at all. And then another question, uh, do the validators have to change? And the answer is, in the medium term, no, right? Validators, if they want to, can choose to still validate the primary network, uh, put down the 2000 stake, uh, 2000 AVAX for a stake, and then also validate layer ones. However, this may be deprecated in the future. So for now, validators have the choice. Thank you very much for listening, and uh, hope to see you soon.